easily the number one requested topic I get on this channel is how do you do Amazon FBA product research. In this video today, we are going to drop the bomb to end all bombs. It is going to be a product research masterclass. We're going to look at my end to end deep dive process, holding nothing back and revealing strategies, ideas, and methodologies you likely won't see anywhere else. Buckle in. This is going to be a big one. Comb your beards and let's go. I've built and led multiple seven figure Amazon brands. Now I'm setting out to share how I did it with radically transparent and detailed weekly videos. Join the journey with me and break free. Welcome to Heist. Hello guys and welcome to Heist. If this is your first time here and the YouTube algorithm is shown this video, welcome. We do deep dive course level content for free on how I build and grow seven figure Amazon brands. One of the core things to do that though is obviously finding the right product. If you get the product research methodology correct, it makes everything else you do on Amazon easier. Said another way, if you can find success with a product research methodology, you can find success on Amazon. In today's video, it's going to be a deep dive. We're going to go end to end on my process workflow for product research. We're going to deep dive into my little brain cells, what few I have and get into how I think about products, how I think about customers. And we're going to look at some interesting little tactics, tricks, and strategies that you likely haven't seen elsewhere on how you can uncover unique products, validate them, align them with your budget and deploy them to be a successful Amazon seller. Enough chit chat, let's deep dive into this sucker and let's head over to my computer. So before we get started today, guys, I just wanna outline that if we hit 100 likes and 100 comments on this video, I'm going to pin a comment at the top that's going to share every single file that we go through today that you can have as a reference point for building your own product research funnel. So the intro sketch I'm gonna to do to map everything out, all of the Google Sheets documents, the Trello board, everything we're gonna dump into a document that you have full access to. So to unlock it, all you need to do is smash the like button, drop a comment down below and I'll open this thing up. Helps me serve the content up to others in the Amazon space that are on YouTube so it kind of feeds the algorithm when it wants. And it's free and easy for you to do. So hopefully you guys don't mind doing that. So to get started, let's just sketch this thing out. I think what's important to understand about product research that is very different with how I think about it than many others in the space do, which is product research isn't about the product. Product research is about the customer. You've got to deeply understand the customer that you're looking to target because it's human beings and people that type in things to Amazon. It's human beings and people that assess the first page of results and it's human beings and people that obviously buy products. So first things first, as a foundational element, I like to target customer archetypes. So foundational element number one here is the customer archetype. And what we're ultimately looking to do with the customer archetype is to solve a problem or or and or fulfill a desire. So I like to choose customer archetypes um, especially if it's your first brand, that is you. Like if you're embedded in the community, you're the customer, you have a deeper understanding of what those customer needs, desires, pain points are. It's a lot easier for you to identify the product journey that they go through. And it's a lot easier for you to differentiate the product, infiltrate the community, build the audience, and speak any language that is likely to meet the needs and solve these problems. So start with a customer archetype. You know, if you're a bowler, do bowling. If you're a gardener, do gardening. 
You know, if you are passionate about home design or a particular niche of home design, dive into that and understand what those people are buying. So start with the customer. The use case that we're gonna look at today is, is actually hunting. I'm not a hunter, uh, but I've got a buddy and a lot of people here in Utah that it's hunting season. They're kind of out doing elk hunting. And it's a crazy, deeply passionate group of people. And when you find people that are passionate, and I'll just kind of put this down here. Passion. You can charge a lot more for the products. It's a lot easier to build an audience. It's a lot easier to identify market and build the community. It's just, it makes everything easier when you tap into a passion oriented niche. The second foundational thing that's really important to understand as you're doing product research is understanding your own budget and your skills. So, you know, there's no use going after a product that's doing a hundred grand a month if you've got a budget to start out at 5,000 bucks. And there's no use targeting an industry or an approach that requires skill sets that you don't currently have. So recognize what you bring to the table, both in terms of financial resources as well as skills. Realize if you're a beginner or you're experienced, because that matters, in terms of how you tackle these particular customer needs, which products you go after. Um, there's no use going after something where you just don't have the skills or resources to tackle it. So be aware of that. And we're going to get into a budgeting spreadsheet just so you can get a bit of a baseline idea as you're doing product research on the types of revenue per month products that you should tackle given your budget. So those two foundational elements are, are like critically important and a lot of people kind of dive right into the hacks of, of product research and just try to find a product that some data software like Helium 10 or Viral Launch or Jungle Scout shows you. You got to start here before you even touch pen to paper, before you even get into software tools and things like that. So get your foundation right. That's critical. Cross this out. And then let's step into the processes. So first, you've got to get product ideas. And we're going to dive into five different strategies that I leverage on a regular basis to uncover a pipeline, a deep pipeline of never ending, really high quality product ideas that I can tackle. So I can always be launching products and I always have ideas on what I can do to sculpt and build a brand again targeted around this customer archetype, this niche, this passion that I want to kind of tackle. So the five that we're going to go over today, I'll just jot them down. We'll go over each one in depth. Let's color code this so it's a little bit easier to break down. The first one is the customer hero journey. And honestly, this is where I probably get like 90% of my ideas. And this is really why it's important to understand and know the customer archetype really well. But it's really just going in and saying, hey, if I'm looking at a hunter, what are all the things that a hunter buys in terms of physical products? And literally just listing out from beginner to an absolute expert that's aspirational in a particular niche or passion, what are all the products that they uncover and ultimately purchase in their journey as that customer archetype? So 90% of it is just understanding what that customer journey is and then going to Amazon to see if the data checks out for your budget, your skills, and how you think you can kind of tackle that particular product opportunity. So it's really important to kind of map that customer journey. Get into the Facebook groups, understand the influencers in the space, understand your own journey, especially if you're that customer archetype on the products and journey that you went through as part of that niche. So that is number one, the biggest one. And we'll dive in and again, using the hunting niche here in a second into a Google Sheets. The second one is um, Helium 10 niche search or niche search, depending on how you uh, pronounce that word. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of just going in blindly and going into say like a sports category and just letting Helium 10 tell me what products I want. You're gonna get products all over the map. 
I like to use the data within Helium 10 to validate products, but I like to niche it down and have it much more focused and using filters and approaches that the vast majority of other sellers don't do. Most sellers do what the crowd does. They go in and they type a particular range and budget, they'll type a particular rev, uh, review count, and then they'll hit go, and then every niche under the sun they get product ideas for, and everybody and their mom are looking at the exact same products. When you use some of these more isolated tools within Helium 10's data, you can uncover some really interesting ideas specific to your customer archetype and niche and passion that you want to target that will give you product ideas. So we're going to show how to do that with the niche search in Helium 10. And by the way, uh, I've got a link down in the description if you don't have Helium 10 um, and it's good for I think 50% off or a couple months free or something like that. But uh, feeds me uh, a coffee once a month if you uh, decide to sign up. So I get a bit of a, a kickback on that. Um, but if you don't have Helium 10, it's a, it's a good tool that I use. So the other one that I do is the Helium 10 keyword search. Very similar, just uses some interesting data approaches. I also like to do one, I haven't really seen many people talk about this, but using Alibaba search to uncover product ideas. So oftentimes you go to Alibaba to find factories, which I absolutely do, and we all do as Amazon sellers, but why not use Alibaba search to niche down and see what leading factories are out there for your particular customer archetype, and there may be product ideas that you see within their catalog that are super interesting that you can then cross reference on Amazon to see if there's an opportunity. So we're gonna get in how to do that. And then the final piece is to basically look at um, like retail brands, leading retail brands in the space and using their catalog, referencing it against Amazon to see if there's opportunities there. So retail brand ideas. Boom, so that's the product ideas. We're gonna go through each one of these today and you're gonna be able to map that out. And then the last thing that we're gonna do really throughout this process, which is really, really important to have an organized and structured and data-driven approach on this, which is the validation pipeline. And I'm gonna walk through a Trello board. Again, when we hit 100 likes or 100 comments, all of these documents, including this actual outline here, I'm gonna uh, pin in the comments. So be sure to do that and we'll open that up. So this is the validation pipeline. Pipeline. I'm using this uh, Wacom like tablet thing, so I'm getting used to it, so hopefully it's legible. I don't have the best uh, handwriting. Maybe I should have been a doctor. Um, so the first thing that we do on the on the validation is is to kind of get the ideas accumulated, and we'll tuck those away and we'll go through all those approaches. But then once we have ideas, we basically want to look at the Amazon data. Then we want to look and validate your budget to see if it meets the budget threshold. Then we're going to look at keywords and referencing the keyword masterclass and how we use that data. Then we're going to identify factories and validate factories as well as the ROI. Like, hey, can I even afford this as a math checkout based on factory costs I'm getting? Then there's a the sampling stage. And then once it passes through all of those things, then you basically enter the launch queue. Oops, let me just clean that up. So that's it. Let's dive into the budget and skills just so we can understand before we even do ideas what our financial kind of scope might be. Okay, so before we dive into the product ideation strategies, I think it's important to really have a basic understanding without a ton of detail, what your budget will correlate to in terms of the products you may wanna go after. Obviously, if you've got a $5,000 budget, you should have a strategy that can be successful with a $5,000 budget. Or if you've got a 20, 30, 40, $50,000 budget, you have a different approach and opportunity set that you can consider when you're doing your product research. So I built this basic table. Um, this isn't like crazy detailed, 
There's a different layer of that that I'll get into in another video on how you can be really scientific about this. But if you want a basic directional understanding that will orient your product research, this is a good spreadsheet to do that. So what I've basically done here on this top column is between 5,000 bucks all the way up to 30,000 bucks a month, which is where most Amazon sellers will typically cluster, especially if they're kind of getting into the game. Um, you can obviously kind of drag this out and go up to a million bucks a month if you really wanted to. But it shows for each one of those revenue levels as a monthly revenue target, um, what the expected cost of the product would be to achieve those monthly sales. Um, most of my COGS percentages are gonna be between 25 and 35%. You know, if you get really lucky and have a high margin kind of scalable product, you might get COGS down in the low 20s or below range. Um, but oftentimes you can't really make the margin math and the ROI work if you've got COGS above 35%. So this is just three tiers of like COGS percentages for each revenue level, what it would cost for that month of sales. So if your COGS were roughly 25% and you did 5,000 bucks a month, your product cost would be 1250, not including marketing costs and all that other stuff. So if I wanted to get a 5,000 bucks worth of sales, I need to buy $1,250 worth of product for one month sales. And this just scales all the way across. The next thing I've done here to kind of break this down even further is to look at, you know, for those landed cost ranges, if I was buying one, two, or three months worth of inventory to cover me, what would then for each one of those revenue levels, my cost of products be? Most of the time you're gonna buy between two and three months worth of inventory. And it kind of depends on how long your product takes to get produced and how long it takes to ship to the Amazon warehouse. So if you've got a, a typical product that say has a 30 day lead time, and then to put it on a boat from say China to the US and into an Amazon warehouse is another 30 days. That's two months without even selling. So in those cases, you're probably gonna need three months worth of inventory for a product that has an end to end lead time of about 60 days. Now, if you've got like shorter production times or you can air freight stuff, you can typically maybe get away with having a month and a half or two months worth of inventory. But this breakdown kind of lets you identify that for different revenue levels and COGS estimates on where you can land. So let's say worst case, you're in this 35% uh, COGS range for a particular product and you need to order three months worth of inventory. What this is basically saying is, is to sell a $5,000 a month product, you need $5,000, uh, uh, 5,250 bucks. And if we went all the way over here to the 30,000 case, you actually need over $31,000 for three months worth of inventory to satisfy the, the cogs and getting the product in for 30,000 bucks a month. So again, not crazy scientific, but a bit of scratch math to give you some directional insights. Also, there's uh, typically launch costs, obviously, that go into the initial advertising. If you're doing giveaways, if you're doing promotions, if you're giving product to influencers, there's an upfront marketing cost. Generally, it's gonna go between two and 10% of the monthly revenue level is typically what I'll spend. Um, it's usually, you know, typically around 5% for me in most cases. So to correlate that, if I was doing a $30,000 a month product, I would need to budget roughly 1500 bucks for my launch cost for that single product. So this just kind of breaks down uh, for those different percentage launch estimates and different revenue level products, how much I would need to budget for launch. So then all you really need to do is look at, hey, what do I think my estimated COGS is gonna be? How many months inventory am I gonna need to buy given production lead time and whether I'm air freighting it or ocean freighting it. And then it gives you a bit of a percentage idea on launch cost. And uh, some other things to kind of keep in mind, shipping cost is typically two to 10% of the product depending on the size, quantity, ocean versus air, et cetera. And then you may have another two to 10% cost to actually get it from port to an Amazon warehouse. So kind of add these up. It doesn't need to be crazy scientific at the product research stage. But if you've got a $5,000 budget, you shouldn't be going after products that do 50,000 bucks a month. It's just the math doesn't work. So this helps you orient around that. Okay, so let's dive into the fun stuff, which is how do we uncover products and ideas for products and then validate them. My number one approach, again, where I get about 90 plus percent of any of my product ideas that I have that I ultimately launch into brands that I run on Amazon is mapping the customer hero journey. Step into your customer archetype shoes, follow through on what the products are 
that they want, desire, buy, and solve problems with. So in this example and all the examples we're doing for product research strategies today, I'm gonna get into the mind of a hunter. Um, don't get political, I don't care whether you like hunting, don't like hunting, I'm not a hunter myself. Uh, but again, it was kind of a, a, a idea that was spawned based on a good buddy of mine that's like a deep into the hunting space. And I was talking with him over the last week about kind of his journey as a hunter. So we're kind of gonna kind of go into that. So the first thing I like to do is to map out all of the core needs and core just data dump of all the products and things and products that people buy. So in kind of diving into the customer experience of a hunter and talking with my buddy, looking at some of the influencers in the space, going into some of these Facebook groups, um, I just kind of rifled off, I don't know, call it like 15 to 20 ideas right off the bat, like basic stuff that most hunters need. So there's archery targets, there's gun targets, hunting vests, waterproof overalls, hunting boots, a hunting backpack, which has very specific stuff so you can carry meat and all this other kind of crazy stuff. If you're a hunter, you probably know what I'm talking about. Hunting chair, because sometimes it's a waiting game and you're out there for eight hours plus. So there's hunting chairs, range finders. So if you find something, how far away is it? Hunting blinds to kind of camel you so animals and uh, birds can't see you. Decoys that you set out if you're a bird hunter. First aid kit. Uh, a lot of hunters are out for more than a day in many cases, sometimes a week. So if they're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, tens of miles away from where they started, if they run into trouble, they need to be able to fix themselves. Heating pads, again, because it can get cold. Game bags. I didn't know anything about this, but apparently there's these like nylon bags where if you end up like killing something and hunting it, you kind of process the meat and put it into these game bags so it's self-contained and doesn't get blood everywhere. Kind of crazy. Um, knives, glasses, sound protection if you're shooting a gun, binoculars so you can kind of see stuff, binocular harness. A lot of people have like vests and harness where they can throw their binoculars in. And then a ghillie camo suit. Uh, like from some of those crazy like military military uh, things where you have all that like crazy leaves and stuff on you. Um, Gill, it's a, a popular thing. So those are some of the core needs. Again, if you were really kind of deep diving into this, you could probably get from most categories more than 30 ideas and core things that just as an anti that if you're a customer archetype, you're going to buy in this space. There's also aspirational things. So there's like, hey, what do I buy? just to get into the space. And then there's when I'm an absolute, you know, fanatic about something, which is the kind of customer archetype we want to tap into. What are the products and things and aspirational um, ideas that we can target to buy? So a lot of hunters, when they get deep into this, um, especially the archery hunters, they get into the physicality of it. They need to train. They need to be able to lug multiple hundreds of pounds for miles and miles and miles if they're successful as a hunter. So nutrition's a part of it. There's actually a brand over here that I mentioned called Mountain Ops based in Utah that has a supplement line targeting specifically to hunters. There's training tools, you know, to get ready for hunt, like weighted vests. Um, they go on hikes, they do weight training, they do CrossFit. And there's a whole other kind of hunter-based like training methodologies that kind of come through. There's e-bikes. If you get really hardcore and you want to go miles away, you might get an e-bike. You might get one of these off-road rigs where you can kind of take an off-road machine deep into the wilderness so you can kind of go find game. And with that, there's all kinds of accessories that they outfit stuff with. If you really get into it, especially if you're a bird hunter, you're probably going to get a dog, a specific breed of dog that can help you hunt. And if you have a dog, they have their own nutritional needs. They probably have a, a training collar that you may need. They may wear a vest to keep them safe. They may wear booties. They may put wax on their paws. There's all kinds of crazy stuff even within the animal ecosystem of hunters that you can get into. And then there's expedition gear. For, for people that want to get really legit into it, they typically plan for a full year for a week-long hunt. And with that comes camping accessories, all the things to get to where they need to go. And there's a whole ecosystem of products there. The important thing is, is especially if you're one of these customers, map your own personal journey on what you bought, what you think about. Get into Facebook groups, tap into the community, ask questions, look at influencers, look at YouTube videos in the space, deep dive into the mind of these customers and follow the product path that they have. And through that, you can kind of then cross reference it on Amazon to see if there's unique opportunities. 
I've kind of put here some influencers. I just kind of typed in hunting influencers and influence.co has really good category listings for who are interesting influencers in the space. And then you'll just kind of find like, you know, key influencers um, through even just searches and, and kind of tapping in the community. Same thing for Facebook groups. Just go in, look at some of the Facebook groups in the space, get into them, especially the private ones and engage into the conversations that are taking place. And then I also just uh, kind of listed some brands. Again, this is speaking to a buddy of mine that kind of knows brands in the space. List all the core brands and start to understand, hey, who, who are the like multi-million dollar, even nine figure plus players that are in retail that are known authorities in the space and understand what their products are as well. So through this exercise, I'm not gonna, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but what I did do is highlight some interesting kind of ones through this that seem like they might be interesting opportunities on Amazon. So I'll just kind of use hunting chair as an example. We won't go through all of them, um, but you'll just kind of see what I was looking at here. So hunting chair was one of the things I kind of tapped into. So I just want to use like the core keyword to find that particular item. So if I'm looking for a hunting chair, I'm going to type in hunting chair. It's not rocket science, right? And then I'm just going to want to kind of first scan and just look at this market. I'm looking at price points. I want to see price points over 25 bucks for the majority of stuff. I just don't like to bottom feed in the in the sub $15 uh, product price points because it leaves limited amount for advertising. So I'm looking at price points. I'm kind of looking at star, uh, uh, reviews. I'm not too scared away by reviews, generally speaking, kind of knowing my skill set. Uh, but I also don't want to see like 15,000 reviews across all the top you know, 10 items because it's going to be really difficult to compete. So I want to see pockets of opportunity here. So uh, 318 definitely doesn't scare me. 133 doesn't scare me. I'm liking these price points. Very generic looking on this first one, like three out of the four are black. So I'm kind of already thinking, hey, there's some visual differentiation here, which is good. This kind of comes down to Amazon choices, editorial stuff. I'll do a video later on how to get into editorial. There's some unique uh, opportunities there. I kind of like this, right? Like there, there's kind of stuff all over the board that I, I, I'm not too scared about from a competitive standpoint. So I kind of do that first scan and then I also go into the Helium 10 Chrome extension. Again, if you don't have Helium 10, sign up for a free trial through my link or a heavily discounted trial through my link um, if you don't have it already. So just kind of scanning here, like pretty decent volume, 25,000 searches for hunting chair. I kind of like that. There's probably a ton of different niche keywords that I can look into. And then as I scan down here, I kind of like this revenue range, right? Like I've got, you know, guys as low as 10-ish thousand bucks up to some heavier hitters, but there's a pretty tight cluster, uh, definitely a unique opportunity for me to at least make 10,000 bucks a month or more. So if that fit within my budget, this is something that I would totally play ball on. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Like some of these were like disqualifiers just because there was too much competition. The pricing wasn't right. It was too scattered. There wasn't enough demand. Um, so I don't um, kind of hone in on those. But these are four that I honed in on. Hunting chair, hunting blinds, game bags, and the ghillie camo suit. So research methodology number one, deep dive into the customer journey, list all of the products, check them on Amazon with your budget and criteria with an eye for, hey, can I impact this space? Can I create a compelling offer? If so, flag it and add it to your product ideas. So if you are here for the first time and you're liking this, we do this literally every single week, hit the subscribe button. Again, all these Google Sheets, all these documents we're gonna go over today will be available in a pinned comment once we hit 100 likes and 100 comments. So help the YouTube algo algorithm out and kind of get this video seen by more people by uh, by doing either a like or and or a comment would be awesome. So one of the uh, approaches after I've done the, the customer hero journey is to actually dive in and get some ideas from Helium 10. Again, I've got a link down below if you don't have access to the software already. Most people and most gurus in the Amazon space are going to say, hey, come, you know, throw in some range on monthly revenue, throw in a price, throw in a revenue or a review count, review rating, and then hit go. And then you're going to get a million different ideas from stuff for the kitchen to toys to lotions to sports stuff, literally all over the freaking map. For me, that's a disaster way of building an Amazon business because it's not focused on the customer, it's hard to build a brand, and it's hard to scale that approach. But even worse, there's literally tens of thousands of other sellers that are using the exact same research approach and research tool as you are. 
So you're going to launch it. And then before you know it, there will be dozens and dozens of sellers and it becomes a race to the bottom. So what I like to do is again, with the customer in mind, with the niche and passion in mind is hone it down a little bit. One of the ways to do this is to do a niche target. So you basically come into product research, go down to black box, and then there's basically four or five options here at the top, click on the niche. And then I'm literally just gonna do hunting. Let's keep it generic. You could do elk hunting, you could do bow hunting, you can even niche it down further, but I'm gonna focus on the hunting niche. I'm gonna say I want at least 10,000 bucks a month, and let's say let's cap it at 50,000 bucks because that's our budget. I don't want anything less than 25 bucks because I don't like to deal with that. And then kind of reviews I leave alone. I don't really care too much about reviews at this point. And then I hit search and then it's just like, hey, let's let's scan this thing and see if we have any interesting ideas. So there's a swivel hunting blind chair. There's a bag, binoculars. There's a camera, another bag, lawn johns. This hunting blind is kind of cool. So it's... 22,000 bucks a month, there's two sellers. Let's kind of look on this one. So I basically go to the product page on Amazon. So there's only 19 ratings, which is kind of cool. And then I just, I'll just do a quick scan on this and see how it's doing on a monthly basis. Okay, 23 grand, that's interesting. It's in the sweet spot. Um, so then I, if I find like an interesting product, then I'll just like copy what I think is the core keyword, which is usually at the, at the top. So let's just do this. Hunting pop-up ground blind. So again, kind of like the first time I'm scanning this, right? These are all sponsored, so I don't worry too much about it. So definitely some larger review amounts here. But I like the price point. What I really like is, is they all look the same, right? Like if I'm scrolling down here, there's nothing that's stopping me. This one's kind of interesting because it's an interesting kind of design or shape. This one's kind of interesting. But I would add this to the list because it's like visual differentiation is key. If I could create something that's a unique design and if I just kind of go up here and look at the how these guys are doing. Yeah, if I had a bit of a bigger budget, these are some heavier hitter items. Um, I would add this to list. So this is something that I would kind of just add to the list here. I'd go uh, helium 10 niche ideas. I'll just copy that over like that. And I'll copy the keyword over. So that's one there. I just kind of go down like that and like heated socks might be an interesting one. The tree saddle. Let's see what this is all about. Okay, so this has, it's the number one new release in hunting. I don't know if that's because it's a name brand, but it's only got a four star rating. Let's see if we know how much it's doing for revenue yet. Holy crap, so this thing's doing 40 grand a month. It's got 12 ratings and it's got a four star thing. Let's just see what the hell this thing is. Again, if I was a, a deep dive into the customer archetype, I would have a better understanding. Okay, so it's like how you hang off a tree. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's just do this keyword and see what we find for the space. This could be another interesting one. Let's do hunting just so it's it hones it in a little bit more. Okay, cool. This one has no review. So this is another one that might be interesting. I'll definitely dive into it. I'll add it to the list. It's worth adding to the list. So there's a couple ideas right off the bat just by doing the niche search. Okay, let's go back to Helium 10 again and let's kind of... Uh, Let's go to keywords now. So very similar to the niche search, you can kind of hone in on specific keywords and then do some search based on criteria. So again, I'll kind of use um, similar um, revenue range, let's say 10,000 to 50,000. 
align that with your budget. I like to do minimum price of 25 bucks, leave everything else alone. And let's just put in here hunting as the keyword search. And let's see what it comes up with. Okay, so there's hunting packs for elk, hunting scent, binoculars, hunting basket, hunting cabin, hunting blade, hunting holder, backcountry hunting, there's a name brand, hunting stools, let's look at this one. So it's 22,000 bucks a month. Let's just see what comes up on this. So again, doing the same scan that I do every time, right? I'm just kind of looking here. A little cheaper than I would like, but that might be okay. Leader only has 133 reviews. That guy's got obviously got a lot more. Nothing scares me in terms of reviews. A little bit of a sea of sameness again. These guys have a bundle that's interesting. This little swivel guy. Let's just look at the category as a whole here. So yeah, this would be like a good single, good double, right? We're kind of like in the 10,000 bucks a month range. I would add this to the list. It's an interesting one. Go back to my sheet here. Helium 10 keyword ideas. And for each of these, um, this may not obviously be the core keyword. I would reverse ace in all of these using my keyword deep dive, which I'll put a, a link above and we'll get into that later how we do that. But uh, at this point, you're just kind of scanning for ideas so we can kind of do a keyword deep dive uh, after the fact. So hunting knives, solo hunting, quail hunting, ghost hunting, hunting ghillie, hunting decoys. So yeah, let's look at the ghillie because I looked at that one and it actually aligns with the customer journey, right? So if you start to see stuff from your customer journey and then it's showing up in the data, that's typically a good sign for opportunities. So this is the hunting ghillie. All right. So this guy, 204, 420, a couple higher review ones. When you're starting to see stuff here, like different colors, this guy has only three ratings with the four star and it's already on the front page, top half of the front page, that's usually a good sign. You don't need to be in first. You don't even need to be in the top five. Sometimes you can make a pretty good uh, living off of a product that's kind of in the top 15 for a lot of these keywords and you could easily do 15, 20 grand a month. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, again, I like this one. I validated it before as part of the customer journey too, but let's just kind of have a refresher here. So yeah, it looks like another single opportunity. Good chance to do like eight to 20 grand a month. A couple of big hitters, obviously too. So yeah, I would add this one to the list here. So there's a couple Helium 10 ideas. Um, let's do something a little unique and let's go to Alibaba next. So another little trick that I don't see a lot of people doing is actually using Alibaba to come up with ideas based on what factory catalogs look like, especially leading factory catalogs, and then referencing those as concepts for viability on Amazon. So instead of searching for products, which is kind of the default on Alibaba, I actually come to suppliers here, and then I just keep it generic and just hit hunting and just uh, get that first scrub of results. Now what I like to do is to kind of thin the herd a little bit and focus on some of the bigger factories that may be targeting this niche of hunting and see if there's any ideas. So I'll click trade assurance and verified suppliers that'll, that'll typically weed some of them away. And then maybe I want to look at like those that are doing like 10 to 50 million bucks a month or a, or a year, sorry. And then you'll have a whole list of like different potential players in the hunting space. So let's just keep it simple and let's click on this first one. So they've got hunting products, hunting tree stands. Let's see what the tree stands are. All right, so they've got all kinds of little tree stands. Let's just type that into Amazon and see what we find. Hunting tree stand. All right, so all sponsor on the top. I don't focus a whole lot on that. 
Okay, uh, always a good sign, right? These are all higher ticket items. Um, those are not, but higher ticket items I like. Not a crazy amount of reviews. I think a lot to be desired in terms of photography. So there's some visual differentiation I'm already thinking about. Again, what's this guy? Three, four, fifth spot. He's got 34 reviews. This guy's on the front page. 39 reviews with a four star. Doing pretty legit numbers. Let's just look at... Uh, yeah, man. All day, every day. I like these numbers already. So boom, like uh, hadn't done that before. Literally just typed that free free flow on the fly. The first supplier I found on Alibaba, I hadn't thought of through my other research methods, this hunting tree stand thing. So pff, let's add that to the list, man. Baba. Hunting tree stand. Boom. Copy that search in there too. So that's how you can use Alibaba. Just find factories, scrub them based on ones that are more legit, looking at verified suppliers in particular revenue ranges, and then kind of scan down. And if they've got a unique or eye-catching catalog, dive into it. They may have ideas and high-quality products that you hadn't thought of that you can then reference on Amazon. For the last product research idea, let's talk about retail brand search. Okay, so coming back to my hunting product brainstorm where I kind of deep dived into the core needs. Um, I was also asking my buddy, but again, if you dive into the space and you are the customer, you probably know brands already. But I asked my buddy like, hey, where are the, where are the up and coming brands or retail leaders in the hunting space that you really respect? I kind of jotted them all down. I actually don't know who they are because I'm not a hunter, but let's just kind of go into first light and see what we find. Black Friday. All right, what do these guys do? Close. Let's just see. Let's just go to this go-to gifts and see if we have any ideas. What I'm typically looking for here is, is like stuff that I haven't seen before or that I may want to kind of do some searches on. So I've seen some clothing stuff, women's headband, fingerless gloves. What's this thing here? Roll top stuff sack. Looks like it's like a waterproof bag that I keep my stuff in. All right, let's see what this looks like on Amazon. Hunting roll top stuff sack. So it's not as specific to hunting here. Don't like the review count on that. Some big review count, but this is another one that's like more on camping. See, it's like 63 reviews. This is one that's interesting. Like I could see like doing like a camo version of this and maybe targeting some of these brands. So, you know, that's one idea, right? I, I, it's probably low on the list, but I think you get the concept, like search these retailers for different ideas kind of based on what you see them selling. You can also type the brand name into Amazon and just see what comes up for those products. But generally speaking, if you can kind of replicate the catalog of a key player in the space, um, you have an interesting opportunity to like take advantage of the fact that they suck on Amazon and that you can bring something unique to the table in terms of offer. And they may do 100 grand a month on their product. You could get in there, do something similar, offer more value and know more about Amazon and kind of get you know 10 to 30 grand a month pretty easily. So it's definitely a strategy that I use. So we won't spend a ton of time on this, but start looking at retailers in the space, key brands in the space, evaluate their catalogs, check them on Amazon, and then also see if there's some, some unique opportunities. So then what I do when I've got a war chest of product ideas is then to layer it into a basically product validation pipeline where it goes through a number of different steps. We validate things like the Amazon analysis. Hey, does it pass that sniff test? Does it have the appropriate budget range for what we're gonna come in? And be successful with. If not, let's disqualify it. We then analyze keywords using um, approaches that I'll link up above in terms of the keyword deep dive to validate keyword demand. And then we do um, factory assessment on ROI once we start to get factory costs, all the way through to samples and then launching the product. So what I would basically do here is in this uh, in this Trello board, 
Uh, again, hit 100 likes and 100 comments. I'll link down to the sheet so you can kind of copy this Trello board if you want. Is anything that's kind of highlighted here, um, all these ideas, I would basically pump these into the uh, product parking lot, right? So like, let's use this as an example, this uh, hunting pop-up ground blind thing that we found uh, on one of the niche ideas. Let's add a card for that. I would basically add a card. I would come in here and I would do like a link to kind of the product search just so I get a bit of an idea, save that. So I do this for all the ideas, right? And then that just shows, hey, these are ready. I think that they're legit. Uh, I would then move it um, along here and just do an assessment, right? Like what are the competitors doing? What's the budget? What's the reviews? What's the differentiation? Uh, we kind of quickly did that looking at Helium 10 on the Chrome extension just to kind of check that out. If it passes that, I'm then going to kind of bring it into the budget analysis. This is where I would reference that budgeting Google Sheets, again, that I'll link once we hit 100 comments and 100 likes and just say, hey, am I in the range if I do kind of 20 to 30 grand a month on this thing? Do I have the money to be able to pull this thing off? If I don't, there's no use spending time analyzing keywords. There's no use reaching out to suppliers. There's no use thinking about the offer and what I'm going to do. Like, you know, this one's dead, right? So if it's dead, I'll basically move it all the way over to the dead ideas column on the on the far right just to show, hey, I looked at it and didn't pass my my sniff test. But if it does pass, I would kind of come in and initiate uh, the activity of a keyword deep dive. So let's kind of come back here. Let's go to this thing. Okay, so this is the blind thing. So let's uh, come to the Chrome extension. I would be a little bit more scientific about this looking at offers, but one of the cool things that you can do here is you can kind of come in and just select, call it 10 ASINs, right? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then I can just hit this run in Cerebro button, which is gonna pull up some of the keyword stuff. Again, I'll link to the keyword deep dive masterclass. It's another video with a unique methodology that I deploy. And I would basically run it through that process. It's basically extracting all the keywords of these, of these ASINs. Boom, so we've got that. Do a couple quick filters, minimum search volume of 100. I'll apply those changes. Then I'll export the CSV. So once I've exported the CSV, Hunting blind. And then I'll just import this sucker there. Replace data at selected cell, hit go. And boom, so I've got all my raw data in this. And whether it's you doing it or if you scaled and built a team of VAs and other people on your team that can do it, you can also have your, your team do it. But what I'll basically do here, if it's moved to the keyword stage, I'll be like, hey, this thing's ready. Boom. Keyword analysis is ready. Save it. You can kind of tag people on your team so that they know it's ready. And then they can run the keyword deep dive. What I'm looking for in the keyword deep dive is two, or one of two things. One, is there only a handful of people that are doing really good with keywords in the space? If so, that's a good sign. I can kind of tackle it. Or two, for the people that have a lot of keyword coverage for the keyword market share, are they not really that great in terms of their offer? Like, is it just a name brand that's ranked for a lot of stuff, but I could totally kick their butt on keywords by doing more with my offer? I'm looking for those two things. If those two things emerge in the data, I'll then move it to the next step. Again, I've got a keyword masterclass that kind of goes into this in more depth, but let's assume that that passed, we ran the numbers and it passed. I would then move it on to the differentiation analysis. And that's where I would come back to looking at all this stuff here and saying, hey, what could I do different, right? I think what's interesting about this is it's very similar, right? A lot of these things look the same. So can I do something with a different camo pattern? Can I have a unique shape? Can I make it easier to install? Can I make it smaller, bigger? Like what can I do to differentiate it? You've got to have a why. This is a big thing that most people miss. If you can't identify what you can bring to the table, why would a customer buy your offer? 
no matter how good the data looks, no matter how good your research was, you're not going to be successful. So in this stage, I would be looking to identify and list all of the things that I could do different and the ideas that I have. Once I've got that, then I'm looking for factories that can potentially build it. So I'd kick it over the next stage and it would be discussing, you know, with 10 plus factories, frankly, uh, and I'll do a separate video on how I vet and analyze factories, but you know, looking for the best factory to work with and then diving into the factory costs of what I want to build and make and then running that math to see at the various price points that I think I can sell it for. Do I have enough payback? Is my ROI north of 100%? Ideally, is it north of 120%? Can I get an uh, offer that aligns with my budget that I want to do? Do the terms of the product in terms of production make sense? Can I design the size in the right way? All these things come through the factory vetting and I'm typically gonna reach out to 10 plus to kind of narrow it down. Once I've narrowed it down to say the top five, it's usually gonna be between two and five factories at least. I'd get samples, so then they'd kick over to the sample round once we've got that. Assuming the sample checks out, I'm like, hey, this is the factory I wanna do. I've got a differentiated product. The keywords check out, it matches my budget. Boom, I'm ready to launch this SOB and make a million bucks on Amazon. <laughs> uh, so if it passes all that stuff in the sampling, then I hit it to launch queue. And there's a whole other process that you guys have seen in depth with my case studies that I would go through in the launch queue. So that is it guys. Again, if this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. It's not uncommon that we do deep dive content like this that's course level for free from somebody who's actually building and growing legit seven figure Amazon brands that isn't a BS guru. Hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you haven't want access to all these spreadsheets, my outline, my Trello board on product validation pipeline, everything we talked about on this uh, video, hit like, comment down below. Once we hit 100 of each, I'm gonna pin a comment at the top so you have access to it. There's obviously a lot more content that's gonna come out of this. We'll do videos on each one of these topics. So be along for the ride and journey in the months and years ahead. We're gonna kind of dive into all these things in more depth. But as much as I could do in under an hour, I hope it was valuable. I hope you saw stuff that you haven't seen elsewhere in terms of tactics, approaches, and strategies, particularly around coming up with product ideas. I hope that you understood a different way of thinking about things. That product research is about the customer, not the product. I hope that you found value in how I analyze and throw things through a pipeline of ideas with various checkpoints to ensure that before you launch, you have a distinct high probability chance of being successful with your product idea, that it aligns with your budget so you can financially pull it off, and that you can replicate this process over and over and over again to snowball over time into $83,000 plus per month, which means that you're running a million dollar plus revenue Amazon brand. Guys, hope it was valuable. Enjoy Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving week uh, as of the shooting of this video in the United States. I can't say how thankful I enough I am about this community. It's so freaking fun doing this for you guys. It's so fun seeing the comments, the engagement, people that are implementing strategies and having real change in their lives and in their businesses. I'm rooting for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having my back. I will return the favor at every opportunity that I can. Love you guys. Cheers. That is the product research masterclass.